when good and evil are confused, our culture dies. We've been studying in these videos about the book of Isaiah, and we've learned a lot. We've learned about the Lord's promises, the details of these, the encouragement to the righteous remnant in Israel and in Judah. And we've been learning that they were going to face the curse of exile, being sent away into another country and facing persecution and slavery. And that was going to happen soon. And this was during 8th century BC. Isaiah, he emphasized again and again the bad news about the Lord's wrath. But that really helps people to understand that God condemns people who live in sin and think it's okay. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5.20 you know, we read in there the word woe. What does that mean? Well, it means two things. It means warning and promise. It means warning and promise of doom that would happen. And Isaiah proclaimed this to the people of Judah. And why did he do this? What had they done? Well, they had been faithless. They had no faith in God. And some people, they had come, become rich by deceiving others, stealing from them. They had made themselves elite, an elite group that looked down on other people. They deceived poor people. They deceived these people who had no way to defend themselves and who had lost everything to the rich people. Woe to those who join house to house, who add fill to field until there is no more room, and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. Isaiah 5.8 now, some of these people, they deceived others. Well, how they do that? Well, what they did, you know, the boundary lines, like the, the fences and things like that, what they did is they secretly moved these. They just kept moving them inch by inch, and the people didn't realize this. And then later they realized that they had taken their land for themselves. Cursed be anyone who moves his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Others... They even had people killed so they could take their land, so they could take their land for themselves. And the revolters have gone deep into slaughter, but I will discipline all of them. Hosea 5.2 For example, there was a woman, Queen Jezebel. She had a man, a man named Naboth killed who owned a vineyard. Now why'd she do that? Why'd she have him killed? Well, the reason was because she wanted to give to her husband, King Ahab, the other man's vineyard. And Ahab said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it please you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And Naboth answered me. He said, I will not give you my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said to Ahab, Do you now govern Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Evil people, they have different ways of getting things for themselves from other people, you know, so that they can gain wealth for themselves. They oppress others, and later the result is that the other people, they lose everything. There were other things that the people were doing wrong that were sent with sin, that Isaiah was condemning them. They were drowning in entertainment. Many, they were even addicted to entertainment. Woe to those who rise early in the morning, that they may run after strong drink. They have lyre and harp, tambourine and flute, and wine at their feasts. But they do not regard the deeds of the Lord, or see the work of his hands. Isaiah 5, 12b 
Entertainment in itself, there's nothing wrong with it. And Isaiah was not condemning entertainment. What he was condemning was their worship of entertainment, making it their God. You know, that's a serious warning for us today. There's entertainment aplenty. It's right there everywhere we look, right in our faces. And that should not make us sit back on our laurels and not think about God and his will for our lives. They do not regard the deeds of the Lord or see the work of his hands. The root problem of the addiction of entertainment and all the other problems that are listed in Isaiah chapter 5 is that the people, they didn't really care. Things were evil. They accepted them for good. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. They didn't care about things that were honorable, or just, pure, lovely, things that were commendable or excellent. These are things that Paul in the New Testament talks about. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Philippians 4.8 a long time ago, the people of Judah, their perspective, what was it? Well, their perspective was that God's law itself was evil. What? Evil? Evil things they thought were good, just. While evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Timothy 3.13 There are people out there who openly are evil and they accept evil as enjoyment. Now their hearts, they have become dark and they are deep in sin doing this. Now question, can they escape the responsibility for the evil things that they have done, oppressing other people and taking things from others? Can they escape this responsibility? No, they can't. They will be stuck to face judgment. Now, those who are faithful to the Lord and live amongst these people who are openly loving evil, they need to bend with them to turn away, to turn away and repent. Today we have the responsibility to tell people who are living in sin like this and calling evil good, no, repent. We should tell them. Now I know there's some people out there and they will say, no, that's their business, leave them alone. But no, if people continue to approve things that are evil as good, then our culture, it will be finished just like it was long ago. Okay, let's apply this to our Christian lives today. There's a preacher from a long time ago named John Calvin. Let's see what he has to say about this. If a woe is here pronounced even on private individuals, when they say of evil that it is good, and of good that it is evil, how much more on those who have been raised to any elevated rank and discharge of public office whose duty it is to defend what is right and honorable? There are those out there who are in leadership positions. Some are in the government, for example, the president or those in Congress. And their job is that they have been given the responsibility to encourage people, to encourage people to do the right thing, to do good things. And we as Christians, we need to stand boldly and to watch these people and to hold them accountable accountable not to change from supporting things that are good for evil things. 
there's one thing that's happened in our culture that has died. It's gone. What is this? Well, I'm talking about babies. A long time ago, people thought it was very important to keep their babies alive. You know, not to just not care about them, just let them die. No, it was important to keep them alive. And now, there's many people who, they just don't care. I'm talking about abortion. That's just one example in our culture. For in our culture, you know, it was something that was there, and it's not anymore. People decided that it was okay to have an abortion. A mother just decided they didn't want to have their baby and get rid of it. It's wrong. What happened? This died in our culture. Neither would our or any other culture survive if we do not stand up for what is morally good and right according to the scripture. As Christians, it's important that we stand bold and tell others to repent when they are doing evil. Coram Deal.